mercy in all that you do for us. Thank you, dear Father, for allowing us just to be in the house of God today. Thank you, dear Father, for every family, every heart, every life that's represented here today. And Father, I pray, God, that the songs of Zion would stir us and the preaching hour, God, would stir us. And I pray, God, that you'd bless everything that's done and said here today. Father, I pray there'd be one here lost. I pray that you'd save them by your good grace and mercy. And Father, there'd be one here, God, that's discouraged along the way. Father, I pray that you'd encourage them and give them strength today. Bless the youth choir. Bless everything that's done. We'll give you the praise and the glory for all that you do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And God's people said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Keep on standing up. Brother Robert, where are you going? This week at the youth conference, uh, we've done that song several times, but we've done it like this. Uh, we had a little bit of a cappella, a little bit of just doing it vocally. Can you do that? Glory to his name.
so thankful for these kids. We had a chance to have Chess and Lay talk with the teens uh, this week while we were at youth conference. And if you remember, Liv used to do a Discovery Club a few years back, and it wasn't too long ago, all these, a long ago, that all these kids were in Discovery Club. And now they're in teen group. It won't be too long that these kids will be in teen group. And I'm thankful for what God's doing in their lives. So I'm just going to take just a second uh, to recognize some of our uh, kids from Awana this past year. Uh, we have Awana on Wednesday night. And uh, I'm out of breath. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, but Tanya, uh, she helps with the crafts. And Daniel and Brady, they help with the activities. And um, uh, Miss Amber, she helps with the food. Am I missing anybody? Miss Patricia, she helps um, just when we need somebody extra. We just have a lot of special workers working with these kids, and I want to thank y'all for that. Um, so anyway, just going to recognize these kids real quick. Camden um, is not here this morning. Reagan is not here. Um, Luke, um, this is for completion of the Truth and Training Program.
us rejoice as though heaven had lost. That's when Jesus arose.
church on Sunday, come back, do whatever I used to do at school. Just live my life. And when he said that, that made me want to dedicate my life that way. First game on the first day, Monday, um, me and Bryce were technically just new to everybody, and they made us feel welcome on the first day. So. Because it wouldn't have been possible if you guys haven't been in there with us. That's right. 
Well, then you don't. Y'all don't have to preach. But any other testimonies before we sing a little bit? Now you got something you can get it out. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, these past several months, I've been trying. 
boys got together and prayed about Steve. Just prayed that whatever was going on in his life, that God would help him, that God would let him be part of what was going on this week. I know that it was uh, just as thrilling to me on this blessed week. Yep. Knelt down at Old Altar in front of 2,000 people. It takes some conviction to walk down an aisle in front of 2,000 people. You know, I, I looked at, uh, you know, if some of you have Fitbit and you got on your phone, it keeps up your steps and tells you you're supposed to do 6,000 steps or 10,000 steps or whatever. And I looked, Brother Mike, and I got most of my steps during church because I was walking up to the altar and back. I was going to altar after altar after altar with these teenagers. Just want more of God. That's right. I say thank God for some of them getting hungry, some of them getting thirsty. God will do something wonderful in their life. Right. Any other teens? Any other leaders? Patricia. <coughs>
we are just, just as, uh, in October, uh, there's the Tab family's doing a, a camp meeting. It's like $65 a person for the whole week. And we're going to be going up. And uh, it won't be in this youth conference, but it's a, I mean, it's for, for everybody. Um, that's something you might want to look at. I promise you it will be a blessing and be a help to you. Um, anybody else? Can I say something? You may. Come on up here, preacher. This is uh, Patricia's dad and brother of love. Uh, you know, I know y'all y'all know him as Brother Edward Vaughn, and he's a blessing to me. And uh, he's pastored uh, for years different churches around. Last last uh, place you were pastoring, I believe, is in Shelby. Is that yeah. the last church you were at? Let's go ahead and call this. I know we were following you guys all during the week you know, on the internet and watching everything that's going on up there. And, and Linda and I already knew it was coming here Sunday morning because we wanted to hear the testimonies of the people and we were really excited about doing that. I wasn't expecting to hear this testimony. Amen. And, and I've seen some things. Um, the moment that I saw Philip, I, I, I could see a joy that I had to see before. And I, I just know God answers prayer, and I thank God that, that my daughter did find this church. God led her here. I know that. And it's kind of told my wife this week, you know, it's sort of a little bit like it was with her and I. It's, she's the one with the church leader in my home, and you know, she was a Christian 11, 12 years before me, and she got to church, and she took the kids, and she took the lead, and, and then eventually I got saved, and I followed, you know, and then God gave me the lead once on my heart got right, and I got saved, you know, and I've seen that first thing that happened right here uh, in this family, and, and I'm so thankful, you know, Brother Chris, I, I, I know that you love the Lord, and, and I know that uh, God's using you here. And when I hear all these teenagers back here, uh, I'm sure we're going to say something about it. Um, but I just want to say now that they all need intercessors. That's all right. these new converts need intercessors. Uh, the new Christian is the joy that they're experiencing. When they go into that world tomorrow on the job, Satan's going to be right there with them. That's right. And they need men and women and parents and friends to lift them up in prayer, to intercede for them, to, and just pray your heart out that these young people will never taste that world out there, because Satan will make it good when they taste it. But we keep praying and build a hedge around them. God will protect them, you know. Uh, God answers prayer. Oh, my God answers prayer. It, it, and I just want to thank you again for the work and the ministry that's here. Thank you guys for supporting them, sending them to you often. We had a great experience. We had to keep my old grandson, Luke, all week. And uh, that was really a, quite an experience. <laughs> 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 uh, we, we love him to death. And you can't help him. You see that big smile on his face. And, uh, yeah. Uh, but... God bless you guys, and thank you so much for calling your pastor here. And uh, God's going to bless, and I, I pray for your church every week, and I, and I pray for your pastor every Saturday night. Uh, I just know that God's going to continue to use him, and great words will come out of this ministry. Uh, God bless you all. Thank you. Slip over there. Uh, there's a song that uh, they learned this week. Uh, uh, they sang it last year at the uh, youth choir, or the, the youth yes. choir and all that. And um, they learned it this week. And actually, Saturday probably uh, learned it. And uh, I want you to listen and let the Lord uh, help you. The Lord bless you. It says this, I choose to be a Christian. You know, we have a lot of choices we can make in life. I can
can choose to uh, act any any way I want to, to a certain extent. If you're ever saved by the good grace of God, you won't be able to get very far uh, and just do your own thing before God corrects you. Y'all yeah. got some youngins, y'all know what I'm talking about? Amen. When you got youngins, we are his children. Uh, you, they can get out of line so far and it's time for correction. But you know, like this song um, says, I'm making a choice. I choose uh, to be a Christian. Go ahead, Brother Ron. <laughs>
we serve a God that's able. Amen. I believe he's big enough to handle all of your problems. You know, if we can bring in all of our sin, all of our mess-ups, all of our nastiness, all of our secrets, all the things that nobody knows about us, that he loves us, and he'll cover those things with the blood, wouldn't it be crazy to believe that that same God could not take our cares could not take our burdens, could not take the things that we struggle with, the things that we go through in our life. Isn't he big enough to save our soul? He's big enough to take care of our problems. Somebody ought to get us today.
It's been good to be here, hasn't it? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Teenagers, anybody else want to testify? Some of you right now, you've been, God's been talking to you. You said, is that there? Uh -huh. I, was, I was trying to put off this because I don't like talking in front of a lot of people, but I'm doing it anyway. Um, I just, I want to thank God for everything that's happened this past week. It's been, in, it's been a big impact in my life. I'm sure it's been a big impact in a lot of these other teens' lives and most of the youth leaders. It's, it was a crazy week, I admit that, and, but it was good. I liked it. I liked it a lot, and I'm looking forward to going back next year. Amen. Amen. Didn't Lexi do a good job on that? Hey, yes, she did. Hallelujah. Hang on just a second. When Daniel and Angie, they first started coming to the church, they talked about how uh, she, had, she had loved being in the youth choir and different things went on, whatever. And she never really get involved with it. And uh, this year they sent her to camp and they, she was she was kind of afraid. They were kind of afraid that, you know, she she wouldn't make friends. They they made up a little girl gang. Uh, <laughs> girly pops. They make up girly pops. <laughs> and uh, anyway, she came back with God on her. Amen. Holy Spirit Amen. in her life. And, and uh, that's the first time I heard her sing and you got to know the job.
just always strive to put God first in Amen. every decision. You don't matter how small it is. Just see God's face and you'll never regret it. And, and just always just have each other's back no matter yeah. what. All of you. Not just a few here and a few there, but the whole group because it means a lot. That's right. Amen. 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 seat over there uh, in your section. Didn't they do a good job? Yeah. Uh, Philip, you're, you're, you're going to be limited on time. Uh, I'd ask Philip to, to say something and uh, if he said uh, he called me and said he had been up at 3 o'clock in the morning one night, probably last night, most of the night. And so uh, he's going to share some things God put in his heart. If you've got to leave, uh, I understand we're running late. We're going to have service tonight. We're just getting it all in right now, okay? And so if you have to leave, you can. Uh, but we're going to try to uh, keep this as short as we can. But I want to give him an opportunity uh, to share a couple things. And i got a, a word I want to share with you at the very end. Um, aren't you thankful for what the Lord uh, is doing in the hearts and lives of, of people, and I appreciate what the Lord is doing. All right, Mr. Reverend. Uh, all right, grab your Bible and uh, let's listen to what the Lord has to say to us. Let's So before I uh, get going too much, we've been studying uh, in Sunday school and uh, our youth services um, all year a lot of different things about um, how we should act, how we should treat others, um, things that we should do. And uh, we had a sleepover a while back, and I asked the teens to prepare um, some words of testimony about what they've learned throughout the year, the things that uh, meant something to them. And uh, I'm going to read a few of those. These are from your kids. Um, these are their writings um, of things that uh, the Lord had been working on them that they were getting from the Sunday School lessons this year. It was a blessing to, to me to read them that night, and I, I feel like it would be a blessing for you all to hear from your own kids. So one is uh, talking about a lesson that we had had on Matthew um, 539. And uh, this one wrote, don't get mad at someone and lash out um, or say words you don't mean. You should pray about it, then address the situation. Um, another one wrote um, about Hebrews 11, 24 through 28, um, choosing between right and wrong. Sometimes making the wrong choice can be fun, but you're supposed to choose the right thing. In the Bible, Moses faces a uh, tough choice. He had the choice to turn his back on God or live his life of luxury and live a life of luxury. Or he could uh, <coughs> hang out with a bunch of complainers in the desert. And uh, aren't you glad he hung out with the complainers in the desert? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so Moses chose to obey God, um, and that's what we should do. We should take God.
outside and follow his word. This is coming from your kids. Amen. God is always here when you are facing difficult situations in life. Pray to him and ask him for guidance. He will help you through it. When you begin to lose hope, he is the light in your darkness. Amen. Another one wrote that these lessons um, taught them right things to do and the wrong things not to do. It taught, taught all the ways that we should follow God and do what's right. The lessons have taught me uh, that we should always be a witness and spread the word of God to other people and tell people how great he is. Amen. Another one here says, faith is something many people have very little of. More times than not, when things go wrong in someone's life, they try to handle it themselves instead of letting God. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, and 5, uh, 5, verse 5 through 6, Trust in the Lord in all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Even if we don't fully understand what God is doing, um, or what he has in store for our lives. He always has a plan. The Bible also speaks of faith in 1 Corinthians 2, 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. God wants all his children to have faith in him and trust in him, not man. We are all his children as long as we accept him, and he never leaves us nor forsakes us. Amen. Another one writes, one of the main things um, they've learned is about purity. That we can't fight that we can't fight temptation or sin by ourselves. The devil is too strong. We should always ask Jesus for guidance and we should have a um, accountability partner. Sin is a powerful force and sometimes we won't ever know um, we're sinning. The devil is the master of confusion. Amen. Another one uh, made some comments here about the things that they had just learned, just some, some bullet points about they were getting right and the Lord was working on them about was their faith, their purity, their pride, um, their doubt. Um, and their anger issues. So this is this is from your kid, y'all. So Amen. You know, um, I thought everybody would like to hear that. And it meant a lot to me when, when they all wrote it out, and uh, it was it was great to, to see what was coming in, and we asked them to do that. So so the kids all made a lot of decisions this week. Um, you know, I think uh, everybody in some manner um, this week. Made professions of faith, rededicated their lives, or surrendered to do something for the Lord. Um, out of the 29, right, 29 of us that were there, so the workers included, we've all made decisions this week, and uh, it's important. Uh, we'll talk to the parents for a minute. It's important that we, as parents, um, are the right example and helping to reinforce what um, the decisions that the kids have made this week. Um, so before I talk a whole lot to the kids, I'm going to talk to the parents for a minute. Um, are you training your children in the Lord, and are you being a good example? Um, you know, myself included in this, um, everything I've got to say here today is, you know, think about it. You know, how are you training your child? Is it to be Christ-like? Are you spending time with them in God's Word? Are you doing devotions with them? Are you holding them accountable to do their own personal devotions each day? Are you being firm with them and making sure they are disciplined to have respect for others and themselves? Amen. Are you teaching them that their appearance and behavior should be different than the world? And are you at church every time the doors are open? Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. What are your 
children learning from your example. 1 Timothy 4.12 says that no man despised thy youth, but thou, an example of the believers, in word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith and purity, Titus 2, 7 and 8, in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works and doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say to him. Are your kids learning about in your example, are they seeing that the joys um, and blessings of life by you submitting to God's word and his will? Or do they only hear about your frustrations and disappointments? Do they see you resting in the comfort of God's sovereignty or consumed with worry and despair? Are they learning the value of righteousness faithfulness and hard work? Or are they learning to be liars, gossipers, and hypocrites? Your children might sit under the faithful preaching of the word on Sundays, and you may have faithfully trained them to understand the truth of the gospel. But what are they learning and observing in your life day in and day out? What is the testimony of your life teaching them about being godly, faithful, and willing? Parents, these kids, as I said, they, they really need your help to stay on track and to be a light in the world. Um, something that uh, I found in doing my study this week um, for yesterday. Friday night was a pretty good statement. Um, it says, uh, parents help shape the world's future by the way they shape their children's values. The first step toward helping children live right is for parents to live right. Yes. Your actions are often copied by those closest to you. What kind of example are you setting for your children? So I've got uh, that for the parents, and, and uh, I put some, a lot of time into this, and I hope it comes through clear. This is a challenge, um, more so for the teens and all of us that made decisions this week um, and that got saved or rededicated our lives to the Lord. And uh, I'll tell you, it was a blessing pray with my own son um, and rededicated his life to the Lord this week. It was, it was great. It was just great to see everybody do it. But this is a, this is a challenge um, and it's a, a little bit lengthy. I'm going to try to get through it as quick as I can. I appreciate um, what the Lord laid on my heart here and hopefully you're blessed by it. So to the teens, a challenge for the rest of your life. Number one, life is not easy. Life as a Christian is not easy. Don't let anything or anyone discourage you. You may say, why? Is it so hard to be a Christian? It's because our nature is that of a sinner. But do not fall back into sin because of feeling you will be looked at as being different by so many in this world. You are different now. You have Jesus in your heart. Get over it. Get on with it. He's there. He's not going anywhere. And that's a wonderful thing. Most things are more rewarding when you break a sweat to get through them. You've got to work on it. it it's, uh, it's not going to come easy. It's more rewarding when you have to work through it. Just remember those things that you work through, the challenges that you have. Um, just remember... Um, to grow, as we've been talking a lot about, is grow because of remember those things that you've gone through, the challenges that you have daily, and grow from them. 
Second, I have God is great. Our God is a great God. He is spectacular, phenomenal, most excellent, and outstanding. Give him all the glory and the glory for everything that he does in your lives. It just happened this week. You asked him into your heart or you rededicated your life. And one thing to remember is when you have doubt or anything, he truly meant what he said this week. And I believe that everybody did. Um, he's there and he's never going anywhere. He's never going to leave you. He's with you always. Mm -hmm. Don't doubt your salvation. Once you've asked him into your heart, he's there. You may get distraught and, and you may sin and fail. And you got to take it to, to him in prayer. But just believe that he has paid the price for all of your sins. And you've asked him to come into your heart and he's there. And he's he's going to be with you always. We sinners, we sin. Um, because of our sinful nature, we disobey God's will and direction. We make promises to God that we don't keep. One thing you can depend on is people being people. So we shouldn't be surprised that we will still sin. But we should acknowledge our acts of sin and ask the Lord for forgiveness. God's greatness is real. The fact that he paid the price for our sins and is willing to forgive us is awesome. Do not be naive about your capacity for evil, nor be in denial of your own shortcomings, but recognize the sin and get it right. Isn't it great that our God is such a great and forgiving God? <coughs> Happiness and joy in the Lord is my third point. Just want to say, I just want to be happy. I just want to do what I want to do. You know, you hear that all the time, right? But what is happiness? <coughs> happiness is an emotional response to an outcome. If you focus on God and put Him first in your lives, you can achieve happiness. But understand, we as sinners are in a world full of sinners, <coughs> and constant happiness is hard to achieve. You see, happiness demands a certain outcome. It is a result, reliant thing. And it, it is emotion. If we are close to God and we make some bad choices in our lives, God will convict our spirit, and we should not be happy until we get it right with Him. Right. Right. Sometimes in life, things happen in our life to take our happiness. We must take it to the Lord in prayer. If your personal happiness is what you're after, that is great. But you are going to be lit down and be unhappy some of the time. Joy, however, is something else. It's not a choice, not a response to some result. It is a constant. Joy is the feeling we have the moment we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Because of Him taking our place on the cross, we know where we're going when we die, heaven. Just the thought of that will keep the joy in your heart always. Because once you've asked him to save you, he will never leave you nor forsake you. As a Christian, we will start enjoying life and literally be happier when we stop trying to please self and focus on pleasing the Lord. We shouldn't worry about what the world will say when they see the changes in our lives. Acknowledge the fact that you are a new creature in Christ and be a witness to your peers. The fourth thing I have is define success for yourself. Let me tell you a story about a man who went to a voodoo shop in the south um, of uh, New Orleans. They had vials of magic potions stacked columns with <coughs> headings above each defining what they would give you, whether it be Utility, health, um, family, um, any legal help, energy, forgiveness, money. Guess which column was empty? Money. Let's admit it. Money is king today, makes the world go around. 
money and success, the more we have, the more successful we are, right? That's what the world believes. I'd argue that our cultural values have even been financialized. Humility is not what everybody has anymore because it's too passive. It's a get rich quick on the internet, 15 minutes of fame world we live in today. We see it every day. But we all want to succeed, right? The question we have to ask ourselves is what success is to us? What success is to you? Money? Okay, I got nothing against money. But maybe it's a health, it's a healthy family, a happy marriage. Uh, maybe it's to help others. Maybe you want to be famous one day. Or maybe it's to be spiritually sound. Or to leave the world a little better place than you found it. Continue to ask yourself that question. Your, your answer may change over time, and that's fine, but do yourself this favor. Whatever your answer is, don't choose anything that will jeopardize your relationship with the Lord. Prioritize who you are, who you want to be, and don't spend time with anything <coughs> that antagonizes your character. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. It tastes sweet today, but it will give you cavities tomorrow. Life is not a popularity contest. <laughs> Be brave, take the hill, but first answer the question, what is my hill? How do I define success? For me, it's measured of seven things that I worked on last night and put together. One, my walk with the Lord, being a good father, being a good husband, health, career, friendships, and teaching teens about the Lord. These are what things that are important in my life. So I try to measure these seven each day. Check in with them and see whether or not I'm in the debt or credit section on these items. Am I in the red or in the black? For instance, sometimes my career is rolling, it's in the black, but I see my relationship with my wife could use a little more attention. I gotta pick up the slack on being a better husband. Getting that one out of the red. Or say my spiritual health could use some maintenance and it's in the red. But hey, my friendship and social life are in high gear and they're in the black. I gotta recalibrate, checks and balances, go to church, remember to pray, and study my Bible more often. I gotta take the towel because I want to keep all seven in healthy shape. And I don't know, I'm oh, sorry, and I know that if I don't take care of them, if I don't keep up the maintenance on them, one of them is going to get weak, get too deep in debt section, and I'll fail in my relationship with God or another one of my relationships, uh, the things that are important to me. So first we have to decide, define is we have to define success for ourselves. Then we have to put them to work to maintain it, take our daily tally and tend to our garden, keep the things that are important to us in good shape. Let's admit it, we all got two voices in us, a good one and a bad one. You know what I'm talking about. Um, something that's pulling us one way or another, and it's hard to make those decisions because um, they're pulling us in different directions. We just got to pay attention to the good voice moving forward and not the bad one. Number five, process of elimination is the first step to our identity. There may be some friends in your life that may not want anything to do with you because you're now saved and have surrendered your life to God. That's okay. <laughs> Be a witness to them and pray for them. But if they don't want to do the right thing and believe on the Lord and support you, maybe it's time to move on. 
You also may have some ungodly things like music, drugs, clothes, movies, or games that you play that you will need to remove from your life. Remember, junk in, junk out. Yep. You need to be a light in the world and continue to grow in Christ. So you may need to get rid of some stuff so you can focus on godly things. Amen. You say it's impossible to just do all that. All right. I understand that things are easier to say than to do. But my point is, we need to ensure we don't put ourselves in situations we should not be in. We should guard ourselves against the things of this world and leave from situations that we know would not be pleasing to God. It's just as important where we are or not as it is where we are. The first step that leads to our identity in life is not usually I know who I am, but rather I know who I am not. The process of elimination. <laughs> Defining our side ourselves by what we are not is the first step that leads us to really knowing who we are. You know that group of friends that you hang out with that really don't bring you, bring out the best in you? They gossip too much, or they're kind of shady, and they really aren't going to be the right example for you. Or that TV, phone, or computer screen that keeps giving us an excuse not to study your mind <clears throat> or getting out of the house to be a witness. Or how about that food we keep eating? It tastes so good going down, it makes us feel like crap the next week when we feel lethargic and keep putting on weight. We had that this week. And we had so many goodies this week, didn't we? I had to get everybody drink way too many sodas and banana twinkies. I don't know if we eat sodas. <laughs> but, uh, you know, think about what you're putting into your bodies as well. <laughs> Those people, places, those things, stop giving them your time and energy. Don't go there, put them down, and when you do, quit giving them your time. And inadvertently, find yourself spending more time in more places that are more healthy for you, that bring you more joy, like being in church and interacting with other Christians. You say, why? Because through this process of elimination um, and eliminating the who's, the where's, the what's, and the when's that we that are keeping you from your identity, trust me, too many options makes tyrants of us all. So get rid of the excuses, the wasted time, increase your options, and you will have put in front of you what is important to you by the process of elimination. Knowing who you are is hard. Give yourself some break. It takes time. Eliminate who you are not. Or who you know you don't want to be first. And you'll find yourself where you need to be. Number six, don't leave crumbs. And the beauty of delayed gratification. What are crumbs? The crumbs I'm talking about are the choices we make that make us have to look over our shoulder in the future or have regrets. You didn't show up for Sunday school because you couldn't get up and get ready on time, and you know you should have been there. I don't know. You stole something from a friend, and he is on the way to your house with your mom, and it's sitting right where you'll see it. I don't know again. You drank at a party because you thought it'd be cool. And now the people you drank with have come to church and you're hoping they don't tell anyone about it. These are crumbs. They come in the form of regret, guilt, and remorse. You need to leave them today. They will cause you more stress tomorrow and they will dis disallow you from creating a customized future in which you do not have to look over your shoulder. The Bible says be sure your sins will find you out. Take these things to the Lord and pray and right any wrongs that you've done to anyone. So let's flip the script instead.
instead of creating outcomes that take from us, let's create more outcomes that pay us back in the right way. Fill us up and keep your fire lit for the Lord. Be a servant of the Lord and do good works for Christ so that you may lay up treasures in heaven. These are the choices I speak of, and this is the beauty of delayed gratification, those treasures that we're laying up in heaven by serving him. Do yourself up. Do yourself a favor. Make the choices today that pays you back tomorrow. Residuals. In business, it's called, for me, it's bonuses. I did my job good today. The checks, bonus check at the end of the year. That's a great deal, right? So whether it's prepping for church the night before, so all you got to do is throw your clothes on in the morning and walk out the door so you're on time for Sunday school. Being example to your friends or choosing not to steal from someone so you don't have to worry about him showing up at your house with your mom and finding out about something that you stole from him. Or choosing to not make... <laughs> bad decisions and drink at that party and walking away from that situation. Get some return on your investment. Your investment is what you make of it, what you put into your body, what you study in the Bible. You can customize, you customize your future by studying the Bible and hiding his words in your heart. So when those situations arise, you don't sin. Seventh is dissect yourself and reciprocate gratitude. We so often focus on our failures. We study them. We obsess on them. We dissect them. We end up intoxicated with them to the point of dissolution. When we get focused on the things we have done that we know we shouldn't have done, we get depressed and we can find that most of the time our obsession with what is wrong just breeds more wrong and more failure. The easiest way to dissect success is through gratitude, giving thanks for that which we do have, for what is working, appreciating the simple things we sometimes take for granted. We give thanks for these things and the gratitude reciprocates, creating more to be thankful for. It's simple and it works. I'm not saying be in denial of your failures. No. We can learn from them, but only if we look at them constructively as a means to reveal what we are good at and what we can get better at, what we do succeed at. We try our best. We don't always do our best. We should let God be the architect of our lives. Let's study the Bible and follow the examples of the Lord that he has in his word that will lead to and feed our success. Let's dissect that and give thanks for those things the Lord has taught us. And we do that. What happens? We get better as Christians. Number eight, make voluntary obligations. Our moms and dads um, teach us things as children. Teachers, mentors, and the government and laws all give us guidelines to navigate life. Rules to abide by in the name of accountability. I'm not talking about those kind of obligations here. I'm talking about the ones we make with ourselves and God. The promises that we made this week to serve him and to honor him. We have to have them. Again, these are not society laws and expectations that we acknowledge and endow for anyone other than ourselves and the Lord. These are faith-based obligations that we make on our own. You will not be fined or put in jail if you do not gratify the obligations I speak of here. No one else governs these but you and God. They're the secrets with yourself and the Lord. And while nobody throws you a party when you abide by them, no one will arrest you when you break them either. But a Christian's pillow is his peace of mind. And when you lay your down, head down in that pillow at night, these are your personal Jimmy Crickets. Jimmy Crickets. And there are not enough cops in the entire world to police them. It's on you. So reflect.
reflect on the decisions you've made and pray for the Lord's guidance and direction in your life. And when life gets tough and you think you can't, remember Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. That's what I had for this morning. I just uh, really appreciate being able to go this week and get to know all of y'all a lot better. And I pray that um, you know that the Lord will continue to work in your lives and that you'll be challenged daily, uh, I'm sure, out in the world. And I uh, pray that you'll make the right decisions and do the right things and not leave camp and leave here today and forget tomorrow about what you learned and the decisions you've made this week. Amen. Amen. story of David. You know, the Bible said that David was a man after God's own heart. That uh, he looked at him as the apple of his eye. He loved David. And I believe David loved the Lord. However, one thing we can learn from the life of David is this. Salvation does not produce character. What do you mean by that, Richard? Just because you made a decision, just because you got saved does not mean that there's some character flaws that you have, that I have, that we don't have to work on. I, I think it would be foolish for me, Brother Mike, to, for somebody that come to church here that were uh, was arrested for grand larceny, they come down here, they get saved, and I say, you know what, I think you'd make a great treasure. You would think I was a fool. You cannot trust your flesh. The Bible said this, the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? So I would encourage you, teenager. I would encourage you, mom and dad. Work on those things in our heart. Let, let's not allow uh, those things, that those bad choices that we make, uh, all those things that our flesh wants to do uh, to wreck us and to ruin our life. And then, the other thing is this, and I, I jotted these down during this week. There were teenagers in our group and many other groups, but then in our group specifically because I knew them, that would go to that altar and they were praying for this. They were praying for a home that would honor and please God. Now, moms and dad, I know that sometimes the rules we make and the standards we have are, are going to make them roll their eyes. And they're not always going to understand it nor will they like it. But they need uh, some structure. They need somebody that's going to stand and say, this is what we do. I, I like what Joshua in the book of Joshua said. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. They need some moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas, some people around them that are going to make up their mind and say, you know what, I will not let the devil have my life. I won't let the devil have my family. I'm going to stand. I'm going to serve. I'm going to do everything that God's called me to do. Mamas and daddies, believe it or not, teenagers are praying that mama and daddy would make a commitment, that mama and daddy would get on fire, that mama and daddy would see revival. this. I want everyone to say it. If you've got a teenager here, I want you to find them and I want you to find a place in the altar. And I want you to pray over them and I want you to pray uh, for your home and for your family. Come on. If you've got a teenager, start walking. Grab them by the hand. There's room in the altar somewhere. There's room on these front pews. If you've got a, 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 a family member, maybe your grandma, maybe your grandpa, and you want to pray around them and for them, come on. If you're a member of this church, I want you to come and pray around some of these folk that are uh, trying to raise their kids and trying to do something for the cause of Christ. Teenagers, get with you, uh, moms and dads, get with your family. Uh, get with them. Uh, pray with them. Let them pray for you.
God hears and answers prayer. Will you ask Him? Will you believe Him? Will you trust Him? While these are praying, I'm going to pray over them just a second. While these are praying, Maybe you're here this morning and say, Preacher, I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved, but I, I'm not close to God. I'm not where I need to be with the Lord uh, today. Preacher, here's my hand. Hands bowed and eyes closed. I wonder if you'd just be honest with yourself. Raise your hand. Preacher, would you pray for me? I do not know. I, 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 I'm not ready to meet God like I am. There's some things in my life that are not right, and I need God to do some things in my life. Anybody like that? Preacher, I need to be closer to God. Maybe you just say, Preacher, I need revival in my soul. I really need revival in my home. Is there anybody like that? Preacher, I'm not saved. I don't know for sure if I were to die right now, if I'd go to heaven or not. Preacher, would you pray for me? Is there anybody like that? Slip your hand up, put it right back down. Preacher, would you pray? I do not know for sure uh, that I'm ready to meet God like I am. Pray for me. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you, God, for every person in this uh, room, Lord God, these on these altars. Uh, I pray, God, that you would touch them. I pray, God, that you'd help them. I pray, oh, God, that you'd help us, oh, God, uh, uh, to uh, hide ourselves uh, in your word, uh, to hide ourselves uh, in your work, uh, that, God, we uh, become consumed uh, uh, with who you are and what you're doing, Lord, uh, so much so uh, that we forget about what we want to do, uh, what we have plans to do uh, and desires to do, uh, and, God, may our life be consumed with what you have in our heart, what you want in our life. I thank you, God, for your word. I thank you, God, for what you've done this week, how you've helped us today, how you've met with us. Thank you, God, for every one of these young people. And I pray, oh, God, as a church family, God, may you help us, uh, uh, Lord God, to encourage them, uh, uh, to be an example to them, uh, to, to push them along uh, in the things of God. Thank you, God, for what you've done for us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You just pray as long as you need to. God, speak to hearts. God, speak to lives.
give him praise. Y'all have to uh, excuse us. We, we've just been used to being in church for about three hours at a time. So uh, we're just coming off of that. All right, we're weaning back. And uh, uh, we're going to be here on Tuesday night. Um, uh, Wednesday's the 4th of July. I know you got a lot of family things going on, a lot of stuff. Tuesday night, we'll be here at 7 o'clock. We're going to have church. Uh, you come out and be with us Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, and we're going to preach and uh, believe God uh, for some great things. And so as many of you that can, join us Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. All right, everybody hear that? Yes. What night? Tuesday. All right, praise the Lord. I, I know what's going to happen is, preacher, some preacher, did you say we say church on Tuesday night? Yeah, hallelujah. Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. All right, let's do this. Uh, the plates are at the back door. Let's just uh, fill them up on your way out. And so uh, we're not having service tonight, and uh, but we'll see you on Tuesday night. And we just thank the Lord for everything he's done. Um, Luke, come up here, bud. Come here, big, big Luke, big Luke. Unless little Luke wants to pray, you want to pray? I'm going to let big Luke do it, man, all right? Grab it right there and pray for us, my Lord. 